Uh, so hello everyone, I'm Marcus from Northstar. Welcome to our NCE training. Uh, I'd like to start with a short uh, introduction of our NCE training. So the full name of, uh, of NCE is Northstar Certified Engineer. So we have trained more than 3,000 individuals all over the world since it started in 2014. By given multiple courses and valuable chances to embrace the LED control system, NCE courses enable you to operate and maintain the equipment independently. Because of the special situation, this year we hold the training online. We are hoping more techniques could get the knowledge and the certification even in this hard time. This term, uh, we will have eight courses and a final examination. You could get online training certification if you sign in for six courses at least and pass the final exam. So I hope you guys can go to all courses to make a good, good score. So, okay, uh, let's start with, this, uh, with today's course. So H series video splicing server. H series integrate the video splicer and 4K sending card in one device. It is highly integrated and very high end. So it's the first all in one spicer and controller in the industry, which really uh, simplifies system integration. So let's check the content for this course. Uh, this includes four parts, uh, which is in, in traditional solution and product benefits, advanced features and product selection guide. And the, in the end of my presentation, I will also show you how to use uh, our H series. I will show you how to configure it at the end of this presentation. So let's take a look at the traditional, traditional solution. As we know, uh, with the LED display industry uh, growth, the pixel pitch is getting smaller and the screen is becoming bigger and the resolution is getting higher. And there are more requirements on the functions of LED screen. Just like this case, in this case, the resolution of the LED screen is 4K. It is 7, uh, 70, 7680 by 4320. So it's, it's an 8K LED screen. For the normal solution, it should use 16 pieces of Amcontrol 660 and one video spicer and four, four pieces of 4K level output graphic card. So actually, uh, this will cause very complicated wiring. So let me show you in the next page. So this is the actual onset setup. As you can see, there are too much wiring. So uh, for, for the technicians, uh, they could get a very hard experience to make the configurations. So the problems with the traditional LD spicer and the sending card is uh, there will be too much equipment with complex wiring uh, the, the amount of equipment as well as the amount and types of cables is too much. So wiring becomes difficult and it, it is easier to make mistakes. So it raises operational risk. Then uh, there are too many limitations on layers configuration equipment and software from different companies. They all carry different methods of configuration and operation. So this results in work being repeated and constant switching between products and an inconvenient workflow. Also, uh, traditional splicers have a hard time guaranteeing good synchronization, which causes the problem when they are paired with an LED display. So this will result in a bad visual experience, especially with fast moving video, such as sporting events and also Poor latency provides a poor, poor visual experience. So these are the common issues 
with a traditional solution. And so in order to deal with those issues, we developed the totally new product, our H-series. So let's take a look at this page because H-series integrate the video splicer and the 4K sending card in one device. So the 16, 17 devices in traditional solution will be exchanged, will be replaced by only one piece of H9. So uh, that means the whole installation and maintenance will be simple. Not only on the hardware, but also on the solution, software, and service. So this will save time, save cost, and labor. As you can see in this picture, uh, this is a comparison of the wiring. Actually, the H-series solution will help our customer save 80% of cables, uh, which including HDMI or DVI cable, USB cable, power cable, and makes the system improve the compatibility and stability. So now you may want to know about the product more. So let's take a look. So let's start with the second part about the product benefits. So the H-series, it is highly integrated. It gives you the convenience to control your display directly with each LED output card. So uh, let's take an example with H5. One H5 integrates five units of 4K sending card. And in total, uh, they could load up to 65 million pixels and up, up to six, 10 pieces of 4K inputs or 40 pieces of 2K inputs. So it can load really large LED screen because the capacity is very big. And uh, the input port includes 3G SDI, DP 1.1, uh, or DP 1.2, DVI, HDMI 1.4 or 2.0, CBBS, VGA, and IP card. The output cards uh, include RG45, uh, HDMI 1.3 for monitoring, and RG45 and uh, fiber for LD screen control. So there are two kinds of LD 4K sending cards. One kind is RG45 ports, uh, that is 16 RG45 ports with two fiber ports. And another one is 16 RJ45 ports without fiber ports. So the capacity for H9 is 10.4 million pixels. And uh, it could also be 13 million pixels. And the output car can also support multiple layers. So each output card supports 16 by 2K layers or eight by, uh, or eight P, or eight, uh, 4K by 1K layers or four, four, uh, four, four K layers. And the quality of layers is not reduced or uh, for image cross output cards. So each layer can scale to the full screen. And uh, another benefit is that the output adopt the frame synchronization technology, which ensures how the output connection kept the image synchronously. And the image is complete and plays smoothly without any stuck frame, lo frame loss and tearing. So let's take a look. Uh, as you can see, the entire system latency is two frames compared to the five frames latency of the traditional, traditional solution, H-series really uh, improve a lot. So too much equipment with complex wiring uh, to be solved and too many limitations on layers configuration. 
and also tearing issues. So uh, the high latency issue uh, sh should be solved. So these are the issues for the trad traditional solution. So if you use our H series, uh, that means it's highly integrated. So uh, there won't be so much wiring. So the installation will be uh, much easier for you and for our engineer. And also uh, if you use our H series, the layer settings could be flexible. So, and for the synchronization issue, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, it's just gonna be perfect because we use this frame synchronization technology. And uh, also uh, the latency will be reduced as well. So uh, in general, each series is just much better than the traditional solution. So the third part uh, is about the advanced features. So let's take a look. So the advanced features uh, includes web page control, seamless switching, HDR, 3D, uh, input and output monitoring, and EDID management. And I will introduce them one by one. So the first feature is that uh, the software is uh, compatible with uh, either PC, phone, and pad. So uh, our configuration interface could be running on any device which has browser. And the visual edit function to make the configuration more easily. And uh, it, will, uh, it, it will also has real-time monitoring to make sure we know the uh, the status of the input and output. The next feature is about the presets. So for each, for each series, it could support up to 2,000 presets. 2,000, so that is a very large number. So it should be enough for uh, our customers' needs. And uh, it could also support fade-in and fade-out with seamless switching. Another feature is HDR. So uh, for sure, uh, this will uh, enhance the image quality. As you can see in these two pictures, HDR uh, just has better visual effect than SDR because the color uh, are more vivid and uh, you can see more details in the shade area in, uh, in the HDR. Also, uh, it supports 3D function, so the customer can have a more immense experience when 3D function is enabled. Another feature is that it could support input and output monitoring. Uh, each MU card integrated one HDMI and one as an port, and it could also check the input and output monitoring on the LCD panel uh, on each series. So uh, the customer can just get the input and output image uh, either from the running interface of each series or on the front control panel of H5, H9, H15. So uh, it's, it's a very useful feature for you to check out the image for the input or output. And the next feature is EDID management. Uh, this, this feature allows you to configure the input uh, resolution or frame rate, and because we know um, all kinds of inputs uh, are going to put to use. So with this function, you can easily configure the input resolution and its frame rate. So it's very convenient. So the last part uh, is about the product selection guide. And uh, then you can get to know which device uh, you can use. So let's take a look. So for now, we have uh, five models. We have H2, H5, H9, H15, and H15 enhanced. So uh, they have different sizes. As you can see, for example, H2 is 2U and H5 is 5U. Uh, 
actually this represents different height for the device. And uh, they all support different numbers of input cards. So for example, H2 could support uh, four input cards at maximum to be installed inside the H2. And for H15, it supports up to 30 input cards to be installed in it. So 30, so that means uh, you, can, uh, you can connect up to 120 input source to H15. So that is a very large number. And uh, also different device supports different output cards. For example, H2, it supports two output cards at maximum to be installed. That means uh, the loading capacity for H2 is um, 26 million pixels at maximum. If two uh, pieces of 20 output cards, uh, of 20 as their output cards to be installed inside the H2. And uh, different models have different numbers uh, for, for the installation. So let's take a look at the rear panel of those devices. So uh, for example, this is H15 and H15 enhanced. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are many slots. There are many slots behind the device. So you can install uh, many input cards or output cards. Now, actually the difference between H15 and H15 enhanced is that uh, you could install more output cards on H15 enhanced. So that means uh, it has bigger capacity. So you can load a much bigger LED screen than H15. And for other models, uh, we have H9. Uh, as you can see, this one, uh, you could install up to five uh, output cards. And uh, you could also install uh, up to 10 input cards in uh, H9. And also we have uh, some smaller ones like H5. Uh, for this one, you could install up to three output cards on H9. And also we have H2. So this one is the smallest and you can install up to two pieces of output cards on H2. So uh, for the input cards and output cards, uh, these are all, uh, all models for the input cards. So we have um, DP 1.1, HDMI 2.0, DP 1.2, DVI, VGA, and uh, SDI, and also CVBS and VGA, and all kinds of inputs you, you can uh, select. So you can uh, choose them depending on your needs, uh, depending on your, on your input source. And also, uh, we have two pieces, uh, two HDMI 2.0 input cards that is uh, coming in the near future. So these are all input cards that H-series can install. And uh, these are the output cards uh, for H-series. As you can see, we have uh, output cards with 16 as their outputs. And, uh, with, and also uh, there's a sending card with 20 uh, as their outputs. And also we have a, a MVR card to, uh, to do the multi-viewer on the H-series. So you can, uh, get, you can see the real-time image of the inputs and outputs using this MVR card. It's the third one. And the loading capacity for uh, 16, for the first one, uh, of course, it's just 10.4 million pixels because there are 16 uh, outputs, 16 other outputs on it. And for the second one, uh, the loading capacity for it is just 13 million pixels. And, uh, but for the first one, uh, it has fiber outputs. So uh, if you have needs on uh, long range transmission, you can just select the first one. And the third one, uh, as I mentioned, is just an MVR card. So you can uh, see the real time image using this card. And this is a H-series solution diagram. Uh, as you can see, all kinds of inputs uh, are going to be connected to the H-series. And uh, we have a preview computer and a control PC. And these are connected to H-series uh, as well. And uh, we could get to configure the H-series 
by using a uh, control PC or iPad uh, or a mobile phone and uh, also some uh, third party uh, controllers. Uh, also, uh, the outputs is very big, as you can see. So each series can load a very big screen uh, at the top. So this is a connection diagram for our H series. So uh, here, uh, now the presentation has ended. And so uh, I will show you how to configure the H series uh, using our control, uh, control interface. So as you can see, this is the video splicer uh, interface. So uh, as you can see, we have configuration, programming, multi-viewer, device, and settings. So uh, the, in configuration, uh, you should be able to configure the output there. So this is for making up your screen, your LED screen. And programming is about open different layers on the LED screen. And for the multi-viewer, uh, you can just see the real-time image of input and output here. And for device, uh, you can see uh, the device running status. So, uh, for example, uh, on this one, you can see this one is connected. And you can also see the firmware version of different output cards or input cards. And settings, uh, you could just configure many uh, uh, features here. So normally when you just got the device, uh, the first thing you have to do is to configure the screen. First, you have to go to uh, settings and output here. Settings and output. And here uh, you have to configure the screen resolution depending on the loading capacity for, for each output. For example, uh, this one, this output card, uh, it, uh, it loads a screen of, uh, let's say, 1920 by 1080. Uh, let, uh, okay, I will just show you another value. So uh, you just have to configure the resolution depending on the loading for each sending card. So uh, for example, uh, we can do this and we can just click apply. And uh, I'm going to also uh, configure the output for this one. And uh, I can just click apply. Yeah, so now uh, I have already configured the resolution for the output cards. And the next step is uh, you have to go to our NOAA LCT software to configure the screen resolution there. So uh, I think you are very familiar with that. You just have to log in first and click configuration and uh, screen connection and configure the, the screen connection for each output cards because as we know, the output cards are connected to the receiving card on the LED screen. And uh, after you finish with that, you can just go back to configuration. And here uh, we're going to configure different screens, uh, configure the output for the H series. So uh, for example, if this screen is being loaded by one output card only, then we can uh, click new screen and we can make it one by one like this. And uh, for example, this, if this screen is being loaded by this output card, then we can just drag here. And, and as you can see, uh, now we have already uh, finished the configuration for, for this screen. And uh, if another big screen is being loaded by uh, multiple output cards, then we can do this. Uh, we can just uh, configure a new screen. And so for example, if this screen is being loaded by two sending cards, by two output cards, then uh, we can just configure different rows or columns like this. Then uh, we just have to drag in uh, different output cards uh, like this. Uh, because here uh, the size of different cards is different. So. Uh, uh, it, it could it could show like this. 
So now we have already finished the configuration for, for your LD screen. This is for the output. And the next step is uh, we just have to uh, drag different layers to the LED screen. So uh, we can just go to programming. Uh, we can just go to programming and we can just drag in the input here. Uh, it's very simple, uh, let me show you. So uh, it's very simple. You just have to drag the input source to the editing area. And then we can get to uh, open different layers on the LED screen. And uh, we, all have, uh, we, we also have some other options here, such as uh, this one. So this one is, um, so uh, this one is just uh, hidden. And also for this one is freeze. So this one will freeze the image like this. And also we have a uh, lock and uh, make it full screen like this. So yeah, it's, it's just gonna be full screen. And also uh, we could adjust the priority here. So we can uh, configure different priority for different layers. And also another different uh, useful feature is that you can flip the input source here. Yeah, so as you can see, it's flipped. So it's very useful. And uh, at the top side, we can see some other options as well, such as uh, freeze to black and freeze, lock or unlocked. And you can get to configure the brightness for different layers as well. And uh, also it supports OSD, where you can just uh, show, you can just make the LD screen show the text or a special image. So this is OSD, OSD function. Also we have the BKG, so you can use different background pictures uh, under the, the layers. And also we have this uh, live or take option. If it's live, that means all changes to the LED screen will just directly uh, go to the LED screen. And if it's not live, the changes will only go to the LED screen if you uh, click this take button. So this is live and take. And uh, we also have preset and preset playback. As I mentioned before, actually H series, it could support 2000 presets uh, at maximum. So in order to save the preset, uh, we can just click here to save the preset. So uh, actually this will save uh, all the information, including the layer size and the position and its input source. So we can just click save preset here. So in preset, uh, you can see it's here and uh, I can just delete some of them and I could just uh, directly use this preset as you can see. So uh, this is very, very useful because you can pre-edit the layers. And also another feature is the preset playback. So actually this one will uh, make the preset play uh, in the rotation. So if you have multiple preset and you can set up this playback and a uh, different preset could be played uh, for different time. So actually this is very useful as well. So um, actually now we have already finished the configuration for the LD screen. And uh, also there are some other features such as the multi-viewer where you can get to see the real time image for the input source or the output source. Uh, for example, we click multi-viewer and as you can see, you can already see the input image here. Yes, and uh, I can also change the templates here and we can click uh, clear. So you can customize the template on your own to uh, fill your need uh, just like this.
Uh, also, I can also drag in this one as well. Yes, so uh, you can also do this and configure the template on your own. And we also, we already have some templates here, so you can just uh, apply them at any time. Uh, but to use this function, you must make sure uh, actually the MVR card is being installed. So you can uh, go to device. Actually, here you can see all the running status of different input cards and output cards. Uh, and also it will show the connection status. For this one, uh, here for example, for this input card, this one, this input is being used. So it's very useful and you can see the connect connector type HTML 1.3 and HTML 1.4, and also it's as a number and the firmware version. And uh, you can also get to see the color sample and uh, connection type for different input. And for the output as well, uh, you can see the firmware version here. And uh, if, if you if you want to use the multi viewer function, you must make sure that uh, the H series, uh, the MVR card, is in the same subnet within the H series. So here you can configure the uh, IP address for the MVR card. So you just have to make sure it's in the same subnet, in the same network uh, with the H series. So you can configure the IP address here. And let's go back to settings. So uh, the EDID management, uh, where you can just configure the resolution, uh, EDID for, for inputs and outputs, as I mentioned. And here is output. So you just make, have to make sure that the resolution here uh, equals to the, the pixel loaded by each uh, output card. And for IPC management, actually it is for, uh, because we have a IP card for the input. So actually this is just for uh, configure the IP cameras. So you, you can enter some uh, IP address, sorry, uh, you can enter some links to get the streaming signal for the IP card. And also we have some other functions like user management. So in this one, you can get to configure different sub users. So uh, they could just log in uh, using this username and the password. So uh, this is for user management. And for the backup management, uh, you can just uh, input, import or export the configuration file. So uh, this is very useful as well. And for the communication settings, uh, where you can just configure different IP for the H series. So uh, if you want to configure H series with a PC, you must also uh, you must make sure that the computer is, is in the same subnet uh, with the uh, H series. So th actually this is for configure the IP. And uh, in firmware update, you can just get to update the firmware for H series. You can also select uh, one sending card or one uh, input card to uh, solely to do, uh, do the update. And for the reset, uh, you can just reset the device and other functions such as uh, gen lock and uh, preset transition. So it's just in the other settings. And in help, uh, you can see uh, some user manual for it. And in about us, you can download the operation log for the H series. So uh, this is very useful in our data uh, in our troubleshooting. So if you met some issues, you can just download the log and send it to us and we will find you, uh, we will find the problem for you. So uh, basically these are the configurations for the H series. And if you have any questions, you can just uh, text in the chat box and uh, the assistant will help you to answer those questions. Thank you.